In the update 1.19.4, Minecraft added a very cool thing called display entities. And what are those, you say? I have no idea. But they are like holograms of mostly anything in the game that you can manipulate to create very weird stuff. Today, however, we are going to learn an easy way to create cool stuff with them, like half slabs made out of any blocks, diagonal roofs, and even a medieval cart that you can use to elevate your creative builds or even make impossible things. All in vanilla Minecraft, just using the help of the Axiom mod. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. Alright, let's start with a few of the basic things that you need to know for this. If you already know the basics and want to learn how to create things fast, you can skip to the minute 550. There are three different types of display entities, item display, block display, and text display. The ones we are going to be focusing on the most are these two, but I have no doubts that the text display is also very useful. But for building, these two, especially the block one, is going to be very powerful. The only way to get them in Manila Minecraft is through the summon command, like with any entity in the game, but as you can see the commands can get very long and complicated. However, in Axiom, if we go ahead and hold alt on our keyboard, we will see this window open up above our hotbar. And up top, we can find Create Display Entity. When we click there, a new menu will open up. Here we can find the three different types of entities, each one with a different menu. So let's start with something easy and create a block. If we click here, we can choose the block type that we want. We can scroll down or search for the block, let's say Polish and the site. For now, ignore the additional settings and just press done. That will summon the entity on our player position. In general, we should see a small white box inside. In this case, we don't see it, and that's because we have to go back to the menu holding Alt, and in the toolbox to the right, make sure to set Show Entity Display Gizmos to on. And now we can see that small box. So if we click on it, we will be able to control in game the position of the entity, for instance. We can do it freely or in the specific axis directions using the different arrows. We can rotate it in any angle around the different axis by dragging the circular handles, and also scale it up or down by clicking on the boxes at the end of each arrow. While we are modifying the entity, we can notice a few different things appearing on screen. First, right on top of our hotbar, we will see that if we are moving the entity, the coordinates in which the entity is placed will show up, and notice how it changes as we move it. If we rotate it, we will see the angle in degrees across each axis. And something similar with the scale, we will see the proportion in each direction. And the second thing is at the bottom right corner of the screen, where a small tooltip will show up. This is basically telling us the things we can do with this entity. We can scroll with the mouse wheel to move it in each direction relative to us, we can Ctrl C to copy it, Ctrl V to paste it relative to our player positioning, Delete to remove it, Ctrl C to undo our actions, Ctrl Y to redo them. Also, if we hold Ctrl while moving it, we can see how it will move the entity in shams of precisely one block. Same for the rotation, with Ctrl it will let us rotate the entity in angles of 15 degrees each, and remember this because it's very useful. Now let's say we rotated our entity and we made a mess, we don't like it, or we chose the wrong block. An option would be to delete it and create a new one, but that means that we have to make all the transformations again. So to avoid that, we can right-click the box and the entity menu will pop up. This menu will be our best friend, so let's take some time to see what each thing does. For a start, we can see that we have Reset Rotation and Reset Translation. This does exactly what you think and brings back the entity to its original position and orientation. We can also reset scale to bring back the original block size. If we click on edit transformation, we can input specific values for anything, like scale for example, but I wouldn't touch this unless you have a very specific idea in mind. In general, with the gizmos is enough to find the parameters that you need. Also, I forgot that holding control while scaling your entity will modify all dimensions together in the same way. Anyways, this option is very useful, but we'll see what it does later on. Here we can duplicate the entity, if we click on it, a copy of the entity will appear right on top of the previous one, so we just need to move it from there. Grouping is also very useful, but be careful with it, and we'll see why in a second. But in essence, this allows us to group entities based on how close they are. If we click here, we can choose the range in blocks in which it will search for nearby entities to create that group. We click group with nearby in range, and as you can see, now both entities behave like one with a single box. We can move them together, scale them at once, and even rotate them. We can then disband the group by going back to ungroup children. This will give us our both separate entities again. Now that we have three entities, we can group them together and even duplicate it. It's very powerful, as you can see. Then we can delete the entire group. Up next, we have copy summon command. This is the same as Ctrl C. And then we can paste the command here in the prompt or in a command block if it's too long. 
There we go. We can also copy the coordinates and the transformation command. I didn't forget about this one on top. In this new menu, we can change the block type. Let's say we rotate it and scale the entity and we are happy with that, but we don't like the block type we chose. Well, instead of deleting the entity and creating a new one from scratch, you can just go here and change the block type. And as you can see, the transformation remains the same. This is also very useful to test different things to see how they look. At last, we have additional settings. For now, ignore this menu, we'll see what things are useful from here when we need them. Okay, I know that was a bit too much information, but there's no need to remember any of that at this point. We will now see a few examples on how to create cool stuff with display entities, and hopefully in the process you will get a better grasp on how each thing comes to play for every specific thing and problem that we might encounter along the way. Let's begin with an easy one, slabs made out of any block. First, we need to grab a block, for instance, an amethyst block. Next, we need to create the block entity. We can search amethyst, or if the block is already in our hotbar, we can directly click on it. Now, let's align it perfectly with the block and reduce the size in the vertical direction to somewhere around 0.5, maybe a bit more than that. That should be fine, or if we want, by holding shift, we can bring it closer to 0.5, like that 0.507 should be fine. We now align it to the ground and it looks pretty good except for the fact that we can't walk on it because it's an hologram. To fix that, we can go and grab any other slab. In general, we would want a block of the same color or similar to get the similar color particles, like purple in this case. And what I mean by that is that if I place oak, for instance, we can see that it has these brownish particles, while the purple is a bit more close to the amethyst. So now we place it right on top of our entity. We might need to make it slightly larger in some directions by holding shift to avoid the glitching, but that's basically it. We now have a slab of amethyst in which we can walk on top. Some blocks work better than others for this, but you get the idea. Now you might say, all that to create only one block. Well, there's a way to make this process faster, and that's using clone, which will be our second best friend in this. If we head to the tools on the right and hold alt, we can scroll up to the second option, which is clone. With it, we can select two points and scroll with the mouse wheel to make a copy. You can notice we don't see the entity in the preview, but that's okay. When we hit confirm, the entity will appear. Sometimes it may appear a bit broken depending on the size we chose, so we might need to make it larger just to be sure. Once we are happy with it, we can just keep cloning it until we have, I don't know, six of them? And what else? Well, alongside clone, we can also use a stack. In the same way, we choose both points and now scroll to stack these six slabs until we get a big floor of amethyst. But wait, there's more. Go to the middle one, right-click on it to open the menu, go to Grouping, increase the range to make sure we select all the slabs, group them together, and now they all behave like one. We can move it and delete the purple slabs, we don't need them for this, and with this we can scale it up a bit if we want, and we can even rotate it. 45 degrees maybe. Now we duplicate it. Rotate it 180 degrees in the other axis. Position it correctly, and now we have a diagonal roof. Of course, it's an hologram, but if we want to make it solid, we can add stairs below and make sure to align it correctly so it doesn't pick through. And now we have a diagonal roof that appears to be solid, we can walk on it. And this only took us, what, 5 minutes? Maybe less? Things escalated pretty quickly with this, as you can see, from one block to a whole roof. Let's now say that we are happy with this roof, but we want to group both sides of it, so it all behaves like one. If you remember, each side was already a group made out of each individual amethyst, and this is something you have to be very careful about when grouping things. First, let's make a backup copy of this so I can show the problem to you. This is what happens in general when you create a group out of entities that were already a group. Things get messed up. We can ungroup it, and that sorts of fix it sometime, but you can see still a few things remain broken. So always make sure to make a copy of complicated things before grouping them, just in case it breaks. But then how do we group groups and avoid them breaking? First, what you want to do is before grouping everything together, ungroup both sides. So we go back to single entities all along the way. And then yes, choose one approximately in the middle and group them all together with a range big enough. So now, yes, we can move, rotate, scale, copy, and paste the entire roof as if it was a single thing. 
Following very similar steps of grouping, duplicating, rotating and resizing, we can create stuff like this window for example, where we used fences to form a cross and a frame made out of spruce. We can even go ahead and add glass panes inside and fix the glitching parts, so now we have a solid window with that extra cool effect of the glass. But something that I want to show you here is that if we move the frame of this window too close to the block that it has above it, the entity will turn to black, and we don't want that. So to fix it, we can right click on the entity, go to Edit Properties, Additional Settings, and here where it says Override Brightness Off, change it to On, and bring the block brightness all the way to 15. So now as you can see the shadow is gone, and we can do the same with the other one, but bear in mind that this won't work on grouped entities, so do it first before grouping things. One more useful thing that I want to show you here is this. Let's suppose that we have this diagonal log that we want to stretch in that specific direction. And as you can see, the arrows will only let us modify the x, y and z directions, which we don't want, we want this direction. So what we need to do here is right click on the entity and down below we see gizmo mode global. Change that to local and now we will see that the arrows follow the orientation of the entity, meaning that we can now stretch it as we intended to, and even move it around. So now, I spent some hours on stream designing this chandelier, I really like it and I want to use it in another project to decorate the interiors. But there's a problem, they are in different worlds. Do I have to design them all over again for each world? No. There's a way to move the designs through different worlds. For that, we have to first make sure to group the entire thing together. Remember to be careful with this and ungroup everything before grouping it all together. Once the entity behaves like one, we can copy it with Ctrl C. And now let's move to the other world. Here I want to use a chandelier to decorate the interior of one of the houses of my mega city project, this one for example. All I have to do now is press Ctrl B to paste the entity in this world. If we did the grouping correctly, we should have our chandelier design in this world now. We just need to position it correctly and add the candles and the real chains to make the design complete. And that's it. This way we can create complicated designs only once and then very easily move it through different worlds to use them when we see fit. Bear in mind though that these are still entities like the villagers and they can cause lag, so use them with caution, especially for big builds. After tinkering around with this for a while, I realized the true potential of display entities, which of course wouldn't be possible without the help of the action mod that makes it a hundred times easier to manipulate and visualize. Now of course this can't be brought over to survival sadly, but for creative world designs and adventure maps they are game changers. At least for me it will change the way that I build in creative. So here are a few more ideas for you to use and to see. We can create vertical slabs for example, very similar to the slabs of any block, but we use trapdoors in this case to make them solid. We can create furniture for example like these chairs, and pots with a mix of flowers on top, a rug design made out of horizontal banners. To do this with a custom design you need to first make the banner design that you want in the loom and then with it inside your inventory you can click on it when selecting the item entity. And then rotate it, of course. I use this to create this sort of tribal tent, with custom banners you can do very cool stuff as you can see. You can also make bigger beds with barrier blocks inside to make it appear solid. This is a nice way of getting rid of the classic wool design that can look very chunky sometimes. The classic axe on a tree stamp, this attempt at the chalice, the different car designs, and I could honestly go on forever. With enough time and patience and creativity you can basically create anything. And here I mixed some of the things that we learned today to create an octagonal windmill for instance, or even this house with a cart and the diagonal roof. Something else very simple that you can use to decorate tables and shelves is to grab items, make them thicker and rotate them 19 degrees from each other, that gives them this really cool 3D effect. And this might be a bit of a stretch, but since they are entities I am pretty sure that with command blocks you can make them move, so that would mean that you can animate them, but of course that's outside of the scope of this video. Alright, so that's it. I will put this world for you to download for free, in case you want to check out closely how I made these things or even use them in your builds, that's totally fine. And that's all for this tutorial, thank you for watching, as always all the support is very much appreciated, this has been Calvin and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.